So I just did a video on functions, in particular injective and surjective functions. So this is going to follow on immediately from that, and we're going to talk about inverses. So uh, what do we need by an inverse? This is kind of like the opposite, right? Um, this is how you want to think about it intuitively. Um, so I guess if we have a function f going from its domain to its range, uh, if f goes this way, then in some sense, g is the inverse if it goes the other way. Okay, now that's a really hand wavy way of saying it, but in fact, there are different notions of an inverse. Okay, in particular, there are a left inverse, a right inverse, and uh, just the inverse. Okay, um, so to give you an um, uh, an example, perhaps of where these things differ. Um, uh, what? No, in fact, okay. Let's define the left inverse. So the left inverse is um, defined like this. So um, G is the left inverse of F if um, so, whoops, that says is, not if. I should say if. Um, so just so I can refer to these, the domain um, we're going to call x uh, and the range we're going to call y. So we generally use capital letters to denote sets and little letters to denote elements of sets. Okay. Um, so g is the left inverse of f if for all x in x, remember this is our domain, I'll write it here, I'll start writing it in a bit, but just, uh, just so it's clear, um, so for all x in x, which is our domain, um, g composed with f acting on x equals x, okay, so basically, um, and this can be rewritten as g of f of x. Okay, so basically, g is a left inverse if um, of f if given any x, applying the combination g to the left of f. Um, so in fact, the combination f and then g gives you back x. Okay, um, and then. The difference between this and a, a right inverse, I think this uh, maybe you can see what's coming. A um, right inverse. So G is the right um, inverse of F. If for all X in the domain, F composed with G of x equals x, okay, um, i.e. f of g of x equals x, okay. So we see that these things are different. So the left inverse and the right inverse look different in the first instance. Um, but this kind of disagrees with our intuition, because intuitively, if ever we have an inverse, it works to the right and the left. And this is because of the commutative property. So um, so in, intuitively, this is not so obvious. Um, Say so intuitively strange, uh, because normally in the number systems that we're used to, um, a times b equals b times a. Okay. So for instance, if you do like one third multiplied by three, then this is one, but that's also equal to three times a third, right? The order doesn't matter. The, the order in which you've written these doesn't matter. They uh, they commute, okay? So um, this is the commutative law. Okay, but this needn't apply in the case of composing functions, okay? So we'll come up with, um, with an example. Um, 
went a bit too far with this one. Uh, uh, okay, let's, let's cover that up. I'll make that black. Oh, can we do this? Okay, I don't know what we're doing. Um, uh, sorry, bear with me. Just get rid of this so it looks better. Um, so now, Um, I'll give you an example of a uh, where the left inverse and right inverse can differ. So, um, if we define x, remember this is our uh, domain. Um, I'll write it here. Domain to be three-dimensional space, and um, our range y to be two-dimensional space then we can define f of um, x1, x2, x3. You commonly think of these as x, y, and z, but um, we're going to use x1, x2, and x3 here, i.e. Um, you can think of this as a vector with three components, right? We're in three-dimensional space, and we define that to be equal to um, the point x2, x3, Okay, which lies in R2, right? This is just a set of coordinates. Um, and we'll define G. Um, so um, G is going to go from Y to X, so in the opposite direction. Um, so in fact, it's going to make more sense. Um, yeah, this is why we have to just use X now, and I'm not going to label this. So this was the domain and range for F. But now, obviously, they um, they're going to differ. So f, whoops. So f is going to go from x to y. That's it goes from three dimensional space to two dimensional space, and g goes from two dimensional space to three dimensional space. Okay, um, and this is defined by g of x one, x two is naught x1, x2, okay? So these are two perfectly well-defined functions. They have different domains um, and different ranges, um, but the domain of one is a range of the other, okay? So therefore, we can, um, we can consider the composition of these two functions, okay? Because um, if we apply f, and then g to x. This, remember, is f of g of x. Okay, and now we're doing g first, so our domain has to be uh, y here, and our range of f composed with g is going to be the output of f, which is again y. Okay, um, so here, in fact, um, x is a vector x has to have two components, right, because we're starting in R2, so x is um, x1, x2, okay, this is a vector with two components, um, so this is, this is all fine, um, so f composed with g of x, what's this? Well, this is equal to f applied to naught x1, x2, right, by the definition of g. No, um, perhaps this notation is confusing to you, but this is completely standard notation. So putting a line below this x uh, means that it's a vector, um, whereas these are scalars. So, um, you know, uh, a vector is defined by two scalars, so g can act either on two scalars or on a vector. It means the same thing, okay? It's just different ways of, of writing it. Um, so, um, f Composed with g of x is f of uh, nor x1, x2, okay, just by the definition. Um, and this is equal to, by the definition of f, x1, x2, which equals x. Okay, so we have f composed g, I'll just I'll underline it to make it clear, we have f composed with g of x, whoops, is equal to x, okay? 
And this, if we remember uh, from the previous video, is a definition of injective. Okay, sorry, this is not a definition of injective. I'm talking rubbish. This means that F uh, is the left inverse of G, or alternatively, G is the right inverse of F. Let me write that. Uh, so G is the right inverse of f, okay. Um, but so now, what about g, uh, let me do a different color, uh, okay, so what about g, that's a rubbish color, um, we'll go back to yellow, okay. Um, so now what about g composed with f on some, uh, oh, that's confusing notation as well. Um, g composed f acting on, uh, what am I going to say x again? Okay, whatever. Um, so what's this? So um, intuitively, you might think, well, g is the right inverse of f. Um, so if you do them in the other order, then this is also going to be the left inverse, um, and and like this agrees with the commutative law. But in in fact, that's not going to be the case here. So g composed with f of x. This is g of f of x. Um, here, um, x will define component wise as x one, x two, x three because the domain of f is R3. Um, so that's just a little aside. So this is equal, so g of f of x is equal to, well what's f of x? Um, f of x1, x2, x3 is x2, x3, so it's the second uh, and the third component. So this is equal to g of x2, x3. Now what's g of x2, x3? Uh, well, that's going to be 0, x2, x3, okay, from the definition. 0, x2, x3, which does not equal x1, x2, x3, our input, um, at least um, at least for all x1 brackets. Um, so this is, there are some values of x1 where this isn't true, okay, so in particular, and G is not the left inverse of F. Okay. G is not the left inverse of F. Okay. So this is how the left inverse and the right inverse can actually differ. Okay. Um, but the reason this is confusing is because, as we said earlier, this is not in agreement with the commutative law. Normally, if something is an inverse one way, it's also an inverse the other way. But with functions, in particular with function composition, uh, this is not always true, Okay, as we've seen here. Um, I'll just say one last comment. Um, go back to red. So if um, g is both um, the left and right inverse, Okay, then we have a case just like this, okay, as in um, it, the, the inverse commutes with the, um, with the function itself. So if g is both the left and right inverse, um, th th this is of f. Sorry, I'll read it properly. Uh, if g is both the left and right inverse of f, then g is just the inverse of f. Okay, so when you say inverse, um, that means that in particular the left and right inverses are both the same. Okay, and this is um, much more common in fact when, it, when normally when you have an inverse it's both the left and right inverses, but there are situations where it's not as we've just seen. Uh, and this depends on your domain and your range. Um, and um, yes, yeah, so that's a brief introduction to left and right inverses and I might do another video 
on how these relate in particular to injective and bijective. Um, okay, I hope that was useful.